Thank you for being here. It's always nice to see something other than just chairs. So thank you for being here. This is the regular subcommittee meeting of the Water Issues Committee. And today is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Let the record show it is 9.30 a.m. And roll call, please, Jennifer. Chairman Blair. Here. Member Good. Present. Member Sishka. Here. Okay. All are present. And as always, we don't have the opportunity to see too many folks in the public, but there are public cards in the back. If you'd like to speak to the subject, any subject today, uh, three-minute limit, as always, and to talk strictly about what you want to talk about. Uh, don't wander off the subject. Three minutes goes very quickly. State your cause, your purpose, and your intentions, and what you have to say. We'll be glad to listen to it. Also, um, the attorney is here, and if you go off topic, I'm quite sure that he'll correct you if I don't. So with that, would you please uh, entertain a motion if everybody has read the minutes of October 5th Summer. meeting? Motion, motion's been made. I hear a second. Yeah, I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All right. See how quick that goes? <laughs> All right. The next item is consideration. Uh, Jennifer, why don't you read that for the public record, if you would, please? Sure. Consideration of Water Service Agreement 21-015, a water service agreement application submitted by Michael Lafferty on behalf of property owner Petroglyph Point Doyar Incorporated, location APN 105-04-217A. Thank you very much. And as most people would know, this item became before us on the October 5th meeting. And in due consideration to all the things that have taken place at Prescott Lake since it was initiated uh, some 20 plus years ago, it was important enough for this commission or this group to send it back to staff to have it reevaluated so that our uh, understanding is clear and concise to either move this forward to the council as a whole and approval or to council as a denial. So that has taken place. So I'll turn it over to our staff right now to Gwen. And remember, anybody that gets up to speak, if you have questions of staff, address them to me and not to staff, and then I will address the question because I won't tolerate somebody chastising the very people that work for this community. Gwen. Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, Gwen Rowich, Public Works Deputy Director. Just want to refresh um, for those who may not have been here the last time what the request is. We'll start. We'll start with that. Um, so the request is for a 224 dwelling unit apartment complex, which is located right here on the map. This is Prescott Lakes Parkway, and this is Petroglyph Point Drive right here. So this is the parcel we're talking about today. The applicant uh, made a request to the Water Issues, uh, water issues Subcommittee uh, by submitting a demand analysis for the 224 unit multifamily residential apartments, which are shown here. This is a preliminary site plan of the project. You can see this is Prescott Lakes Parkway right here. And this is Petroglyph Point Drive. The city uses the water, um, the water resources management model to estimate water usage. <clears throat> Um, citywide, the average demand for multifamily uses is 0.12 acre feet per dwelling unit. This project has a combination of studio apartments, one bedroom apartments, and two bedroom apartments within it. Based on the 0.12 acre feet per dwelling unit, the approximate or estimated water usage for the um, potable water is 26.88 acre feet. The project also has open space and landscape areas, which will be required to meet our low water drought tolerant planting uh, requirements. Based on that, there is 2.44 acres of landscaped areas. Uh, the multiplier is 1.5 acre feet per acre, resulting in an estimated water use of 3.66 acre feet per year for the landscape component of this project. There is also proposed to be a restaurant fitness center um, with a pool and spa. You can see here in the center is where the pool and spa is. This is the recreation and fitness center. And there's a small retail component right here. 
The water usage uh, for those is estimated to be 3.60 acre feet per year for a total water usage uh, estimated at 34.14 acre feet per year for this project. Are there any questions so far? Phil, Steve, any questions so far? Questions so far. Okay. At this point, um, this is what was presented in October. And there were several questions from the community about the development agreement and the water allocation under the development agreement for this project. So as part of that, um, I'm going to turn it over to the legal department to answer some of those questions for you at this point. Thank you, Gwen. If you can put up that first slide. Oops, sorry. Oops, touchy. Right here. There we go. <laughs> I think we all are this morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the first question that arose uh, at the last meeting was whether or not the city council had to approve a change to the master plan. The simple answer is that it does not. And I'll go through the analysis with you a little bit. First question, I'm sorry, uh, was whether the master plan has to go to the city council if there's a change in the master plan. The short answer is it does not. Why do I say that? Because we review the development agreement. Uh, as all of you probably realize, the development agreement is an agreement between uh, the city and the developer. It provides the developer certain assurances. Developers are going to invest a lot of money into a project and they want to make sure that their uh, project is feasible. The, so the process for the developer to alter the master plan is found in section 3.8 of the DA. The master plan can be altered without approval from the city. Developer need only provide information as to what that change will be. Council approval is required on new final plats. Again, that is section 3.8 of the DA. The city may not unreasonably withhold approval of final plats as long as the density requirements and the underlying zoning are met. When next uh, slide, thanks. So that gets us into the question of maximum density. The DA at section 3.4 allows for a maximum density of 3,504 dwelling units, important concept, dwelling units, within, the, within Prescott Lakes. Density may be moved between the parcels within the development at the developer's discretion. That's the way the document is written. The DA, section 3.6, says if the, density, if the density proposed would be higher than reflected on preliminary or even final plats, the project must still be allowed as long as the unused density is available. Water for development. The second question arose as to whether or not there was water for the development. And once I'm done with my presentation, I'm going to kick it back to Gwen, and she's going to kind of show you um, a spreadsheet of the water that is still available in Prescott Lakes. So water for development. The DA Section 3.11 provides water for up to 2,718 dwelling units. As of 2021, 1,972 dwelling units were approved or constructed. Water entitlement is transferable according to the agreement, just as the density is transferable between parcels covered by the DA. Prescott Lakes may request additional water or bring additional water uh, for an additional 786 dwelling units uh, up to that maximum density of 3,504 but city approval there is not guaranteed. Again, guaranteed 2,718 dwelling units. And one of the interesting uh, things about this DA is they uh, tie the water to dwelling units as opposed to acre feet, and that's something that Gwen is going to get into a little bit as we proceed. So in summary, the master plan may be altered without approval from the city by following the process outlined in the DA. Density may be moved between the parcels within the development at the developer's discretion. 
if the density proposed would be higher than reflected on preliminary or even final plats, the project still must be allowed as long as unused density is available. Water entitlement is transferable between parcels covered by the DA. That's what's being proposed here. That's my initial answer to the first two questions that were raised at the last meeting. Now we're going to go to Gwen Rowich to look at the existing uh, water. Yeah, Gwen, could, could you speak into the microphone so that these folks can hear? Of course. You're very soft-spoken, so yell. I will, I will yell. That is no problem. I can do that. I have three children. I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. I just got to get it to come up. Sorry. Let me use that. Is that? No, oh, it's not there. Jennifer, I might need your help. Sorry, I can't get it to come up. Oh, there it goes. Nope, nope. Oh, almost. Grab it. Don't, don't click on it. There, there it went. Uh, no, it won't stay. It looks like it might work. All right. Hopefully that will work. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. So um, city staff routinely tracks um, when developments are approved, when there uh, has been water allocated in order to know that the project is being consistent with the language within the DA. And so this is the spreadsheet that we keep for Prescott Lakes. And within Prescott Lakes, um, as has been mentioned, there's been a lot of history at Prescott Lakes. And when the 2004 amended and restated development agreement was adopted, these, this column here in column A, these are all of the um, areas within Prescott Lakes that had submitted a preliminary plat prior to the state of Arizona declaring this area to be in groundwater mining. So these preliminary plats were submitted in order for the city to be able to allocate groundwater to these developments at that time. Once the development started to actually move forward, final plats or um, multifamily type projects or commercial projects would come in. So you can see, for example, in Lakeside, they actually final platted a phase 1A and a phase 1B. That's not uncommon. It's actually quite common in the development world. And so we track those individually in order to track. Um, here we track the total number of lots that are platted. And here we track the total number of lots that were developed for multifamily uses. And in this column, we track developments that were developed for commercial uses. Under the development agreement uh, for water, and that's what we're talking about today, is, uh, is water. We only track dwelling units. We do not include commercial projects within the dwelling unit count because they're not dwelling units. Question, Gwen. Can you, for the benefit of the audience, define your color coding? Oh, um, that's strictly for staff purposes. Um, anything that is blue was built uh, before 2009 decision and order and anything green was built after 2009 decision and order. It also helps you see the numbers a little bit better. So I left it on there. So what we're actually tracking is dwelling units. 
Under the 2004 amended and restated development agreement, the total number of dwelling units with a water allocation was 2,718. The total number of dwelling units that have been approved or constructed so far is a combination of those lots that were platted and those lots that built multifamily uh, development for a total dwelling units of 1,972. So the total number of dwelling units that remain under the original water allocation in the development agreement is 746. Now we do have several projects on our spreadsheet that are in some state of review here at the city. For example, Astoria Phase 2B has not final platted yet, but the Water Issues Subcommittee did approve water for their project. And so we kind of hold that off to the side. We also know that Predator Ridge had approximately 67, uh, 67 dwelling units in their preliminary plat, so we kind of hold that off to the side. And then today we have a request for the Views Apartments, which is 224 units. So those three projects in total are an additional 306 dwelling units that have a very high likelihood of moving forward. Again, there are still remaining 746 dwelling units under the original allocation of 2,718. In the development agreement, it says that an additional number of dwelling units, an additional 786 dwelling units, may be allocated water by the city at a future date. That 786, along with the 2,718, is the 3,504 maximum density that um, City Attorney Matt Padraki was talking about. The total number of dwelling units, dwelling units, not water allocation, but dwelling units that remain from the 3,504 is 1,532. There is a provision in the development agreement, section 3.7, that talks about uh, maximum time frame for those initial preliminary plots to move into final plot status. And if they do not, then the unused density is reduced by 350 dwelling units, not water allocation, but dwelling units. So at this point in time, I've highlighted this 746 as well as the 1182. That's because today, under the water allocation that they currently have, this is Prescott Lakes I'm speaking of, they have a remaining 746 dwelling units that may be assigned to future development, such as the application that's before us today. If they ask for additional water, they may have additional density or uh, up to 1182 if they ask for additional water by the city, city and it's granted by the city. So I hope, I hope I've made that clear, what we're looking at here, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. I have a question, Gwen. Yes. Only due to the fact that I was here when Prescott Lakes first came in, when you look at those numbers and you look at the ones you have highlighted in column C, and then you reduce the amount of water those three want to bring in, and subtract them from the 746 that's available, that's what we have left at the present time, correct? No, no. Uh, what we have right now is 746 dwelling units. Correct. If we approve this application, it would be reduced by 224 units. So you would have 522 units left. Are the other two that are on there as well, have they been deducted from the 500? They have not. So at this point, when we see that first column, if I'm not mistaken, that is Prescott Lakes at full build out. So I'm or roughly. I'm sorry, I, I'm. In other words, Prescott Lakes was allotted a block of water. They were allotted 2,718 dwelling units. And they could move that water wherever they wanted to move that water based upon how the master plan developed. That's, that's what Mr. Pedraki. That is what the agreement says. You can transfer 
the water and right. the dwelling units. My point being is, is that if you look at a, at a map, if you have it with you, when you look at what's been platted, final platted, and built upon, how much is left after this request? After this request, there will be 522 dwelling units remaining. Okay, well, the point I'm trying to get then is we have, is there any more available land in Prescott Lakes? Yes. That would need 500 more hookups. So this is a map. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn it. Sorry, wrong direction. This is a map of Prescott Lakes. This is the boundary of the Prescott Lakes subdivision as it was originally um, developed. I'm sorry, this isn't the way it was originally developed. This developed over time, but this is the extent of the boundary of Prescott Lakes today. Currently, uh, the only vacant parcels are this one right here. This is part of Pinnacle. I believe it's phase 2C. This parcel right here with this little point, that's Predator Ridge, and that was shown on the spreadsheet in that peachy color as something that we're anticipating coming in. That has not been platted yet? It has not been final platted. It has been preliminary platted. And the preliminary plat shows how many? Uh, I believe it's 67. 67. Yes. We also have this parcel here along this highway six, I'm sorry, highway 89 frontage. This large parcel right here has not developed. And then we have these few little lots right here along Prescott Lakes Parkway. That there's two small lots right here, one on each side of the um, the um, the adult the adult home. That's not Highgate. Highgate is right here. So this is the senior living center. Thank you, Kay. So there's a parcel here, a parcel here, and then there's a small parcel here. So that is the only land remaining in Prescott Lakes that has not been developed. I just was trying to make the point that after what has been preliminary platted and what the request is today, generally speaking, there would be enough water to complete the Prescott Lakes master plan. There, there would still be 522 dwelling units remaining for these for these vacant parcels, and if that amount of water is is not enough for any future development that may be proposed, then the council may consider granting additional water up to the 3,504 dwelling units. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steve. So, Gwen, we're talking dwelling units. I just want to make sure that everybody understands we're not talking water allocation of 0.12 or 0.15 or 0.17 we're talking dwelling units that is correct and i will say um just for a little bit of a history lesson the way that the city used to allocate water for development included a a small factor for future commercial uses and that's why the commercial lots within this development uh, are not included and it the count for the maximum development here is done by residential dwelling units so the way we used to allocate water in the previous policy was 0.25 for every dwelling unit right 0.25 plus 0 0.1 single family yeah that that's correct it's, it was 0.25 for single family 0.20 for multifamily and there was a 0.10 added to each single family for commercial uses that those residences would bring to the community. Okay, but that was just so that we could keep track of, theoretically, what we had allocated. Correct. But it's dwelling units, and that's what you're talking about. We are talking strictly about dwelling units. This development agreement is predicated on dwelling units. Okay, Matt, I have a question for you. So under the DA, is this basically a first come first serve basis it it seems to be I, if gwen can shed any light on the history of that she's allowed to but yes if it's based on dwelling units and you're first in the door and you can get to those 2718 dwelling units before somebody else then you're at least entitled to that mortar beyond that of course you're gonna have to bring water 
this was a, 3504 level. This was distinctly brought up when Jeff Davis and Bill Brownlee brought this to the city. And the comment was made that if they expended the amount of water that was blocked to them, they would have to come back and ask for more water from the city. So it could be used anywhere they wanted to within this development. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? From no, it's just that uh, with the uh, change of allocation or the change of calculation for um, single family versus multifamily, um, now that we're down to 0 0.12 for apartments or multifamily dwelling units, uh, theoretically, you could uh, have higher density for an apartment complex um, because of the 0 0.12 versus where it was originally at 0 0.20. So that increases the potential density, but there's always a cap mm. for the total amount of water that was originally allocated. Correct. And you could go back and say, if you want to turn the wheel backwards, that we are debiting each one of those units too much water and on this, all the single family residential up at two when the water policy was changed. So if we went back and changed it to what we know is true with using our calculations today, there would be probably double the amount of water left over. Well, that uh, certainly falls into the category of hindsight is twenty twenty. There you go. And that's why it's much easier just to talk about dwelling units. <laughs> It is because d density is really um, the issue when you're talking about neighborhoods and, you know, uh, good growth. That okay. it, density is the key to that. And I think, too, um, we're not talking about zoning here. We already know what the existing zoning is. We're not talking about anything else. We're talking about strictly water and water units of whether this project has the ability to be able to have it watered. So with that, us sitting up here now, it'd be time to go to the public if you guys are good with that. I think so, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, if you'll read each name, and again, three minutes uh, at the podium. She has a green light, yellow light, red light means to wrap it up, please. I hate to be rude and tell everybody to sit down, but we have a lot of folks that might have something to say, so must be respectful to everybody. Thank you. Deborah Pernice. Good morning. Good morning. Is this on? Okay. Good morning, Honorable uh, Council and Commissioners. I'm Deborah Pernice. I am here speaking as a Prescott Lakes homeowner. I purchased a home from Dorn Homes here in Prescott Lakes in 2018 under the auspices that this was a master plan development governed by the master plan and development agreement dated September 20, uh, 2004, which has been submitted to you and I expect as already been discussed, you're quite familiar with. Um, my understanding that this would be primarily a single family residential development. <clears throat> it's my understanding and belief that the development agreement is still a valid and active document. It's also my understanding that the Prescott Lakes Homeowners Association, to which I've continuously paid dues since my residence here, continues to observe and execute its duties, including the maintenance of certain community areas of Prescott Lakes pursuant to the terms of those agreements. I have recently been informed and believe that Prescott Lakes citing, S-I-T-I-N-G, and approval processes have been ignored or bypassed, and that the maintenance of the master plan was nefariously neglected, and that its terms disregarded to the detriment of Prescott Lakes homeowners like me, and to the advantage of rapacious, inf influential, and powerful developers. This has resulted in the actions to date concerning the Petroglyph Point Office Park and contravention of the requirements, provisions, conditions, and commitments of the Prescott Lakes Master Plan Community Development. To wit, the development agreement incorporates the Prescott Lakes Master Plan and indicates all development in Prescott Lakes must be consistent with the master plan. The development agreement specifies the requisite procedures to change the master plan if a proposed development is inconsistent with the master plan. Those procedures were not followed in the case of 
portions of Petroglyph Point Office Park, where Highgate Senior Care Center is now, and or where the Lafferty uh, High Density Apartments are proposed. Most pertinently to this commission, the proposed increase of 224 water units violates the development and master plan agreement, um, the water policy and city platting requirements for the following reasons. The replat, number one, of Petroglyph Point Office Park, lot six from five units to one unit, violated the master plan and the use of that lot to increase the water units from five to 87 for Highgate violated the agreement. The city's water policy and city planning requirements, referring to DA uh, 38, DA exhibits B and E1, map 2019-0029622, and city of Prescott preliminary plat approval process, page 6. Similarly, the replat of Petroglyph Point office park lots 1 and 2 from 9 units to 1 violates the master plan. Please wrap it up. I therefore respectfully request a deferral of all actions on the current request before this body or a denial until the city council or proper authorities review these proposed changes and determine whether they comport with the city's established zoning and planning policies and procedures, which have thus far been evidently circumvented or plainly violated. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ken, excuse me, Ken Janicek. Good morning, council members. Um, my name is Ken Janicek, 1715 Commonwealth Street. Uh, I would like to talk for a second about the history of the Great Platte Rush. As a good faith attempt to create a justifiable, sustainable water policy in the high desert, the ADWR declared the AMA 3,000 feet out of acre feet per year, out of safe yield in 1998. The unintended consequence was the Great Platte Rush, which everybody knows about, to grandfather 32,000 lots before the effective date of the declaration. This is a callous disregard of the intent of the ADWR declaration. Fast forward to 2021. Now here we sit with 13,000 acre feet overdraft per year. And I see a second great plat rush to lock up city water for densification before the ADWR DNO. Leslie Grazer presented some great information on the proposed water portfolio for the DNO that shows headroom of 2,000 acre feet that's supposed to last for the next 20 years. Is that really enough for any surprises? What will you do if the sleeping dog of safe yield wakes up and ADWR wipes out that headroom for safe yield over the next 20 years? Your 10-year IGA with Salt River Project and Prescott Valley to refine the U.S. Geological Survey Nargothim model is supposed to show the effect of the big Chino pumping on the Verde. This is about the project. Let's stay focused to the project. Okay. If you are starting the, the use of the new ADWR numerical model, is it going to show that you have the recharge that you expect in your DNO? What if the effect of hotter and drier climate affects that? What's the effect of people using more irrigation when the climate gets hotter? The annual projected new demand is, is 450 units a year, but the apartment densifications already exceed that in just the last two months. Last month, you rejected the request for the cottages at Rosser. Petroglyph Point would use three times as much water per acre. Foot, per acre. These are just some of the known issues. What other surprises will appear? The, the prudent right policy would be to at least wait for the decision in order before approving the second great plat rush of water requests. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Gehring. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, 
Good morning, uh, subcommittee members. Jim Gehring, 1762 Commonwealth Street, Prescott, Arizona, Parkside neighborhood. You're going to find that we have a few different numbers than staff has given you so far. And let me start with that. The development agreement and the Arizona Department of Water Resources via Exhibit E3 in the development agreement assigns water to the various areas of Prescott Lakes. And indeed, 2718 what is the number. But if you research things further, you'll find that the development agreement and E3 subdivides that water between areas. It turns out that Petroglyph Point Office Park is within the area shown in the development agreement, and E3 is, uh, um, oops, sorry, Peaks 2. So the development agreement and Exhibit E3 assigns 150 density units and 150 water units to Peaks 2. So how many have already been used? 124 have been used on Prescott Lakes Apartments, 86 on Highgate Senior Care and Memory Care Center, and one on the Prescott Plastic Surgery Center. That's 211 units today in an area of Prescott Lakes that was intended to have 150. If the request for 224 in the same area is given, you're looking at 435 units in the area where the development agreement and the master plan shows 150. We're in disagreement on the 27, 18, and final numbers. It's unfortunate they were, were not supplied with that table in the uh, agenda packet. Uh, we would be able to better respond to it if we were, but Our calculations show that at present and planned, including the planned developments the staff has mentioned, you're looking at 2,492 units. And we believe that the 350 unit loss also included the water. That being the case, within Prescott Lakes as a whole, as a whole, excluding this apartment complex, you're already 124 units over. I want to talk about the replatting for a minute. In 2019, staff administratively allowed the combination of nine lots, open space, and common area into one lot with no open space. That is absolutely in conflict with the development agreement. What the development agreement requires, if a developer wants to do something that is not consistent with the master plan, is that they first present to the city an amended master plan. That wasn't done. Then they second present to the city all the documents that are required for a preliminary plat review so that the city can review that proposal on that basis. Five pages of detailed documents that were not provided. Last. Please wrap it up. The council should approve all final plats. Thank you. Joe Tomei. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Joe Tomei. I live in Prescott uh, Lakes. Um, I've been here as an investor for since January 2000. I go all the, I, I go back 20 years here. Okay, um, but thanks for the opportunity to provide follow up from this first session. Some of these things that I have noted, I'm going to skip over. They've been covered, but I want to raise a couple of items for you. On the presentation this morning on the development agreement, it talks about developer with a capital D. It's very clear that the developer with capital D is identified as Pre Prescott Lakes Developer 1, no one else. That is your Davis and your Brownlee, no one else. It's also very clear it states that any third-party small-case developer cannot unilaterally take unused density and reallocate it to another parcel. That is, that is so obviously clear, I don't know how it was missed. Um, there's another 
point I'd like to bring up, and that is that loss of 350 units occurred in November 2017. That was because those parcels up there that were preliminary platted were not final platted at that time. With that loss of 350 and with the current uh, requests that are out there, if you added these apartment units at 224, you're left with 83 units at Predator Ridge and Saddleback Estates. 83, that's it. Now, I, I, I'm going to offer you the, the background for this, uh, has some tables and so forth. But essentially, we're not in agreement that there's 700 and something left. There's 83 if you approve this. Thank you, sir. So that's all I have. You can get that to the clerk, please. Jim Joannis. <coughs> Thank you. Good morning, council members. My name is Jim Joannis. I live in Parkside, Prescott Lakes. Been a resident of uh, Prescott Lake since 2008. Uh, the development agreement is a contract. It's in force. And just like zoning, it has the same effect and probably more than zoning. So Mr. Blair said that we can have 32 units per acre for zoning, BG. However, we have another restriction. The development agreement is concurrent in restricting with the zoning so that you have to meet both requirements to have your BZ, BG zoning and the development agreement uh, met. So what we have is a developer who is subject to the development agreement. He purchased nine units, nine units. There were nine lots. He purchased nine units. The sophisticated developer then went to planning and zoning and had the property put into one unit, one lot. Now, the development agreement states at section 3.5 that the final plats cannot be changed. So if we look at that section 3.5, we notice this. We notice that there has been a final plat of peaks 2. And that is the senior campus that would include Highgate in this proposed development. The development agreement says once final plats are, are uh, recorded, that no density transfers may occur. Quoting, no density transfers are available involving units on final plats that have been recorded as of the date of this agreement. Peaks 2 had its final plats recorded both for Petroglyph Park and for uh, the senior campus. The point Mr. Gehring made is very important here about developer. I think the city wants to say any developer has the right to to move around densities, but that is not what the document says. The document says unused density, developer with a capital D, which is PL Partners One, Brownlee, and who is the other guy? Davis. Davis. And any specific assignee of the developer shall have the right to utilize unused density. So it's only for them. It is specific to them. No other people unless we can see a specific assignment. They have assigned those rights, I believe, to the Prescott Lakes Community Association. Please wrap it up, sir. All right. Now, 
what did the sophisticated developer know? He knew he was buying a parcel with... You had three minutes. Okay. He is buying a parcel with nine units on it. He is not buying a parcel with 224 units on it. He could look at at uh, Exhibit E3, which uh, our young lady had up before, which showed that only 150 units were available to the simplest of minds. His development of 224 exceeds the 150 allowed in this parcel of property. So he's now come here trying to say he wants 24 times more the number of dwelling units than that parcel was allotted pursuant to the development agreement. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Robert Sisley. Good morning. Don't be afraid of it. Let me get a little too close. My name is Bob Sisley. I'm the president of the Prescott Lakes Community Association Board of Directors, which is a party to this development agreement that the city approved in 2004. You've heard a lot from a lot of Prescott Lakes residents, and I'm not going to repeat what they had to say, but it's based on these facts that the board of directors unanimously opposes this application and the awarding of any additional water rights as we feel that it would have a negative impact on all of Prescott Lakes either now or in the future. My remaining comments are mine and not the board's. I got to make sure I, you understand that. I live in the Parkside neighborhood also. I live on the wall that separates Parkside from this property in question. Prior to purchasing my home in 2009, I did review the development agreement and the master plan and I counted on the city to maintain the vision of what Prescott Lakes was originally designed. I now have a major concern on what my home value and my way of life is gonna be. I personally feel that the best interests of several hundred outweigh the interest of a few. I encourage you to recommend to the city council that this proposal be denied. Thank, Thank you, sir. Joe Farnara. Good morning, subcommittee. I am an uh, attorney here in town, and I represent some of the people that you've heard from this morning, as well as some that you have not heard from. I had planned to address some of the things that they had addressed, but I figured I'd go off script and talk about a few other things so that you're not bombarded with the same lines over and over again. Does that mean we can talk about hunting? Maybe after this. Okay. Or fishing. <laughs> so we have this uh, amended and restated development agreement, right? And what it does is it affords certain rights and responsibilities to the parties there too. One of those parties is the city of Prescott. Another party is the Prescott Lakes HOA, the association. Then there's a number of developers that are party to that. That agreement was signed and recorded September 21st, 2004, okay? The parties to the agreement, again, the City of Prescott, PL Custom Investors, LLC, PL Parcel Investors, LLC, PL Developer, LLC, sorry, that's PL Developer, I, LLC, Prescott Lakes, D Cinema 163, Prescott Lakes Golf Club, LLC, SDC Prescott, LLC, Prescott Lakes Community Association, LLC. There's somebody missing from that agreement, a party missing from that agreement that comes here today under this subject application asking for water rights there under. The property owner, Doyer Inc., their predecessor in interest is Fan Contracting <coughs> Inc. On the date that this development agreement was recorded, Fan owned the property. Now, I just spent 30 seconds of my time talking about the parties to the agreement. You'll notice I didn't say fan. So what I'm going, where I'm going with this is we have a, an applicant here today who is requesting at the expense of other developer parties to this agreement, he's asking you guys to approve allocation of water units 
224 to be exact, taking them from someone else. Now, I know the agreement says that they can be transferred, okay? But we're asking to allocate water units to a property, to a party that's a current owner that was not a party to the agreement back in 2004. So what I'm saying is that this, this should be enough to muddy the waters. I think that this needs to be looked in and this action needs to be deferred because the applicant here today is not a successor to any party to this agreement. They have no rights, no responsibilities under this agreement. So by taking from others that do to give that to someone that does not, the city may be violating this agreement. The last thing I'll say is that there's obviously a lot of people here today. Sounds like that's unusual. This is my first opportunity to address you all, and I appreciate that. These owners are very concerned with their property values and what's going to happen when there's a giant apartment complex put up. We're looking into that, and um, we're currently assessing our position on, on that regard. So I just wanted to thank the City Council Subcommittee for my time here today, and I hope you'll do the right thing. Joel, what uh, law office do you represent? Musgrove, Drutes, Cack, and Flack. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Mr. P Mr. Perdaki. So I've reviewed the white papers, and I can kind of go over my thoughts on those at the end of public testimony or or as they arise. I leave it up to you. I think uh, when we're done, you can do that. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll draw the focus of the attention. This is about water. Even if this committee moves it on to council, full council, that's when all these other things can be talked about and heard. This is one step in the process of what we do in the city of Prescott. So it can go to it as a denial to the city. They still have to debate it or it can go as a positive and they'll still have debate it with public comment. So this is not the last time that your feelings will be heard. So with that, do you have some more, Jennifer? I do. D. Carter Labarge. Good morning. Um, I'm D. Carter Labarge. I live in Lakeside or Lakeside subdivision, Prescott Lakes. There's been discussion already submitted with this request that this request is improper due to the fact that the city in some peculiar manner has circumvented all the rules and regulations by independently changing the plat from nine offices, uh, nine small offices to one large lot, which strangely makes this complex of 224 units much easier to move forward. <laughs> For this reason alone, this board should deny this application until the circumvented procedures and legalities regarding these actions have been worked out in the public eye. More important than the possible improprieties stated above, the current water contract that you have with us it was agreed to when these neighborhoods were originally presented and approved by the city of Prescott. The current residents of the area have already consumed all of the agreed to water units and the city has graciously allowed even more units to be set on top of that limit. These limits were established in good faith to ensure that the city of Prescott and more importantly the citizens of Prescott have the ability to open the tap at will and get water. Today and for the generations long past 150 years from now, unless this good body knows exactly when the water is going to run out. Now I've been before several boards for several reasons in the last year and I've asked many questions of the city regarding the Prescott Active Management Area. I've asked about the consistent decline in our groundwater levels and I've asked if we'll meet the safe yield by the designated time frame of 2025. What I missed in all of those issues was that this moment before you is comments only where no one says anything about it's a requirement for you guys to answer the questions. It's a comment period. And I appreciate that. But based on the non-response, I think we all know that we're not going to reach the safe yield by 2025. And that projected failure to meet the requirements of the Arizona Department of Water Resources has not stopped the city from recklessly approving new development of up to 10,000 new homes, promising all- Stay focused on the topic, please. This is the, it, water is our not, topic. The topic is this development. Yes, sir. So I implore you to take a look and then pause for a moment and take a look, a closer look at the amended trajectory of growth in our area. And until you're able to get the most current data and review our growth strategy, make damn certain that we are not overreaching our goal by building and building and building. 
just because we can or because a developer says that we must. Our water resource is changing drastically on a quarterly basis, and we as a city are making decisions based on five-year-old data projections. Perhaps the first thing that this board should do is revise our ability to update our water resource projections in a manner that would be not out of date every time we require realistic information dump for all the city planners. These guys have got a hard enough job. Thank you very much. You're requested to deny this application until really the real data on where the water is going to be for this unit, these 24 units, and all the rest of the units that are coming before you. So thank, thank you. you very much. I, us I usually wouldn't take the time to respond to that, but I would like to let folks know that on the city's website, we've had no less than three presentations from our professional consultants from Phoenix that included staff that talked about our water structure, our water policy, and what we're doing here in the city of Prescott. And it's very apparent that some folks haven't seen that. And I encourage you to look at that. This community has the best water portfolio in the state of Arizona. And I'm sometimes offended by the fact that people talk about what we're doing wrong when you haven't read the report from the very people <laughs> that are paid to bring these reports forward. Continue, Jennifer. Michael Brogy. Good morning, council members. Thank you for this opportunity to share some thoughts with you. You've heard from learned colleagues who have studied this for weeks and weeks, hours and hours of in-depth study of the development agreement. And the point I want to make is an agreement is based on one fundamental factor, trust. You gentlemen were elected to your public office by this community to hold your office with trust. We have a turnout here today of individuals who are very concerned about our community and our future. The agreement with the city and any current and future parties were bound to the development agreement. The agreement is also clear in the provisions that take precedent over any other condition, such as the construction under the BV zoning. BV zoning can only be approved for a density that meets the parcel allocation. These are the facts. This is why you're seeing such a turnout. You know, I go back to trust. I go back to a city uh, hall meeting where Mr. Lafferty made a commitment to all of us in that, in that gathering. He said very clearly, if my project is opposed, I will withdraw. We have hundreds and hundreds of signed documents from our fellow neighbors in opposition to this project. I would ask Mr. Lafferty to meet his commitment to us that he made on that day. We ask the city to live up to its requirements. We trust you. We trust our community and our future. We expect you to stand up for us as our elected leaders. The conditions of ownership that we hold and our investment in our community, we expect you to help us defend our property and defend our investment. Thank you, gentlemen. Jennifer, you, Jennifer, how many more do you have? One more. Okay. David Parker. Good morning, Council and members of the community. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, this has to do a lot with the water issues. I think that when Prescott Lakes was first developed, that they were allotted so many acre feet of water, I don't know the exact numbers, 
but they were allotted so many acre feet of water that they could use as best that they determined. They weren't necessarily restricted to only using single family residents for this water, as was evidenced by the Prescott Senior Apartments and the Highgate. The question I have is I think that um, Prescott is in need of apartments in different areas. There are not a lot of places that you can develop apartments. I know when Marlon Kirkendall was still alive, he told me that we were probably 1,000 to 2,000 units under what we could utilize in Prescott. So I don't understand what the fight on this one is. The zoning is there. The water is there. Even though people think that it's going to devalue their property, when you have a $40, $50 million apartment complex being built next to a property or in a subdivision, that's not going to de detract from the value of your houses. Well, if you, if you can find an evidence of where that has happened in Arizona, maybe you let us know. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, everybody, for your comments, and thank you, staff, for the presentation. I want to go to our a city attorney, but before we do, I, I want to clear up one thing. Uh, Gwen, if you'll indulge me in the fact that, you know, there's an old saying that numbers are numbers, and I won't carry on with that, but are those the numbers that are used with the Arizona Department of Water Resources? Uh, the 2718, yes. So this is what the is The plats being... that are recorded that were shown in blue and green, yes. And this is what is going to them with our decision and order as well, based upon it being a, a ongoing development? Yes. Okay, so... We are updating our, as I said, we are updating from the 2009 DNO into the current 2021 DNO update. We are adding any lots that were final platted after 2009. So these are not fictitious numbers and staff is up to par based upon the DNO that we have to submit by December so we could not be further behind the ball than on top of it right now. It was timely that we were actually working on the DNO when this issue came up. Okay. And with that, Mr. Pedraki. Yeah, could, you were, I, could I ask you a question before you start? Sure, and I, I, I defer to you if you want me to address some of these things or not. I just saw you looking at me when some statements were being made, so yeah. <laughs> I just wanted could to. You, could you tell me more, a little more about the capital D? <laughs> now, yeah, so uh, the argument... At, and, and it was in one of the white papers, was can uh, the d density be transferred to a third party? So if you look at Section 3.6 of the development agreement, it says developer with a capital D, and then in parentheses, and any specific assignee to the developer. And that's what this applicant is. He's the assignee to the development. And there's in the general provisions in Section 9, point five, it states the covenants and conditions herein contained shall apply to and bind to the heirs, legal representatives, personal representatives, successors, and assigns of the parties hereto and shall inert to their benefit. So, uh, so what does it take to be an assignee? Of the Somebody developer buys, with the capital D. <laughs> and if Laverty wants to build that one, he, he's welcome to. But, you know, somebody who who buys property at, that is subject to the development agreement. So my question is, does any new property owner automatically default as an assignee? Yeah, they step in the shoes of the original property owner. It's subject to all the conditions of the previous uh, developmental agreement. Correct. Hmm. Do you have any other comments? Unless you want me to, you know, having, I took a look at the D, the white papers, happy to address those. Yeah, could you do that, please? All right, so the first one we just talked about, that the there was a claim in the DA 
development agreement portion of the white papers. We'll start with that one and then we'll go to the water one. And then Gwen, you're going to have to pop up and help me out with that a little bit. But there was a claim that the unused density cannot be transferred to a third party, but it can be transferred uh, by a developer and any successors and assigns. Subsequent landowners are such successors. And that's, again, in the DA at 3.6. And Could you make sure you talk into the microphone yeah. so these folks can hear? And that's in the DA at 3.6. And, and so what's the, the differentiation the between a third party and an assignee or a successor? Isn't there a legal uh, distinction? I, I don't know in this particular case. Um, I don't think so. I, I think the current applicant is an assignee subject to this existing contract. <clears throat> you can hop. Yeah. I see your hand. Hello. I think this is the first time I've ever had the chance to speak at one of these meetings, but um, I want to try to answer your question, Councilmember Good. So one thing that I noticed in reading the development agreement, if you look at um, paragraph 2.1, the very first sentence talks about um, all owners of the property within Prescott Lakes being subject to certain paragraphs. One of them is Article 3, which we've spent a lot of time discussing today about um, transferring density and that sort of thing. So I think that, in addition to everything that Matt has said, also informs this discussion that successors to um, the original Capital D developer um, are bound by this agreement. Can you address the claim that the um uh, Prescott Lakes Community Association was the specific assignee after uh, um, Davis and uh, Brownlee no longer were involved as the major developers. And you might let the folks know out there exactly who you are because you've never spoke before. <laughs> <laughs> this would be our water attorney, folks. So I, I'm Dana Walsh. I'm an assistant city attorney here with the city of Prescott. I've been on the job about four months, so I'm still very much learning. But I do have a background in water law from Nevada, so I do have a lot to learn about Arizona. But I also know a lot about contracts. And so, Council Member Good, you, your question was about um, the Prescott Lakes Community Association, and I don't have the history at all it, as far as the original developers, but I do notice that they are a party to this agreement. So um, I don't know if that helps. Well, it seems to me from the um, uh, information we were provided today that the um, community association uh, became a, a primary assignee um, and was responsible and is responsible for managing the uh, development agreement as it uh, proceeds forward until we meet these uh, limits, whether it's for um, dwelling units or uh, water allocation units. So does the community association assign all other rights? It doesn't appear to me that that's how it works, but I could, could easily be wrong. Um, I'm, I'm looking at it interpreting, um, article three and the water and the dwelling units. So I haven't read this document looking at the rights and responsibilities of the community association. So it's been said that, yes, we can move water or, or not water, but dwelling units from one area to another area. And then all of a sudden it was said, no, you can't do that. So where do we get the idea that we can move units from one area to another? Do 
was what, 3.8? I'll, I'll take a stab at it, and then I think that Matt can also jump in. So what we have is um, Section 3.6. We've talked about that. We also have, um, specifically with regard to water, Section 3.11, which is the um, talks about the city's duty as the water service provider. And we also have in the background um, some correspondence with the Arizona Department of Water Resources from 2019 on this issue, where the Arizona Department of Water Resources clarified that it is the city's um, duty and responsibility to manage its water resource portfolio and that there is no um, that by virtue of this development agreement and the exhibit to the development agreement the department of water resources wasn't implying that different amounts of water could only be used within different pieces of property that's not the way that the department of water resources interprets it and it's also not the way that the city um operates as far as water allocations. So I think there's two, two general reasons. One, the specific language of the contract in section 3.6, 3.11, and then as well our understanding and the Department of Water Resources understanding about the way that water is managed here in the city. That help, Phil? Somewhat. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do something out of the unordinary and go ahead and let this gentleman make a quick statement. Up at the microphone, please. Thank you again, Jim Joannes. Mr. Siska asked, what did the capital D in developer mean? In the definitions on page two of the development agreement, developer shall mean PL developer one LLC, Davis and Brownlee. Okay, mm -hmm. so now if you want to transfer water units, only that developer can do it, or a specific assignee of that developer. We have seen no document which shows any specific assignee of developer. So the only one who can transfer, Brownlee and Davis, PL Developer 1. Bang. Th thank you for your opinion. Okay. That's all I needed to hear. All right. Do you want to hear anything about final plats? No. All right. I, I want to go back to our attorney. Uh, how about the, the point that 150 units were allocated for this parcel, the, the peaks too? The uh, map our young lady put up said they've already overused them. Now you're going to put in another 224, and you still have four undeveloped parcels of BG we understand for that. another 221 units. We understand In a 150-unit parcel. We understand that. Thank you. And those densities can be moved. So, Matt. Matt Matthew. Matt. In, developer, in the, in the nope. definition section of developer, it also says and its successors and assigns. Developer shall mean PL Developer 1 LLC, an Arizona limited liability company, and its successors and assigns. So you look at it as if somebody bought it, then they are the accessor. Correct. All right, there's a legal opinion from our lawyer, all right? And that's what, no, sir, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. I wanna, I wanna reiterate, you'll have every opportunity when this goes to council to address all your other concerns, whether it be traffic, police, fire, whether it's not in the DA or in the DA, you'll have that opportunity. At this point, what we're here to talk about is whether there's enough water in the Prescott Lakes master plan for the density of this apartment complex based upon what was provided by our staff as well as by our attorney. Okay, is that the way you guys see it? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, 
Do you have any further comments, Mr. Padraki? <laughs> that was the, oh, I'm, I hesitate to say this, the question on the big D. Um, if, if there's other, if you want me to continue on with some of the other arguments that they made, I'm happy to do that. I'd like to hear them, yes. All right, so the, the DA does state that the city shall approve final plats. And what I'm doing is kind of going through their arguments and addressing them. So the DA does state final plats uh, when proposed use is the same as a, a preliminary plat or when unused density uh, is transferred at section 3.9. That's one of the arguments they raise. However, it does not state that it is only the only time it can be approved. The author, uh, uh, I think, misreads that section. The section makes it mandatory for the city to approve in the two circumstances uh, that we've been talking about all day, and then it gets discretionary in other circumstances. As we know, the existing zoning is BG, and that's consistent with the DA, and it actually vested in the DA at section 3.3. There was another argument about section 3.9 and my read of section 3.9 of the DA does not prevent transfers of unused density to areas that have final plats. It prohibits transferring units away from final plats. The purpose of that restriction is that the number of units are vested as of the final plat, so it protects the overall total density to prohibit transfers off of the final plats. So that language, I think, is very specific to prohibit transfers of units shown on final plans. So those are, are kind of, that, that's my read of the DA based on the arguments raised uh, in the white paper, or at least the most salient ones. And if you want to address the water issues, we can go into that as well. There were two white papers that we looked at. Well, I, I want to hear, we're here for water, okay? I can tell you whether I like the project or don't like the project. That would be my personal opinion. But this is about water, and this is why we're here and why it's called the Water Issues Committee. I want to know if the water is available and if the gentleman has the right to that water. And that's pretty simple. Well, I think I answered those already, but yes and yes. Can you address the... Um suggestion that since the uh, 350 dwelling units were lost due to non-compliance that the um, connected uh, water allocations to those units would also be lost or not and then i'm going to let gwen pick this up a little bit but when we're looking at the reduction of the 350 units those need to come off the total number of uh, units allowed the 3504 not the Isn't there an assumption that those units would have had uh, water allocated to them? And then, it, Gwen, I think at this point, if you want to pull up your map again or your, your spreadsheet. You can't really build a unit, Gwen, can you, unless it has water? That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, it, it, what was the question? I, those 350 that Mr. Good alluded to, I, that would be water allotments lost to water because you can't build anything without water. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I think this development agreement is a little bit different in that it initially allowed a block of water, 2,718 dwelling units, but the density is 3,504. Okay. So it gave the developer or any future developers the opportunity to come back and ask for additional water. The language in 3.7 is not specific to water. It's specific to density. It says that failure to final plat is a reduction in density. It does not say that it is a reduction in water. Okay. That's okay, Matt. Uh, I've heard... Yes, you can move water, or not water, density units. And no, you can't move density units. So um, which is it? Trying to get Dana used to the, the crowd. Um, respectfully, I think you, you can. I think you can. I think 
um, the the arguments we've heard today and the arguments that we've read in the white paper are not persuasive to me. What I read in the DA is what's persuasive to me, and I think the DA answers that question. But I would I would go back and say, based upon when this was developed, that the density units could be moved as long as it was in coordination with the underlying zoning. The underlying, and this master plan has been amended no less than seven times. And densities have been changed no less than seven times. Therefore, I'd say, you know, when you're asking about whether the density can be what it is in this particular instance, it's zone business general. So that density would allow for the apartments. And if the water is available, then how can you deny the density based upon the underlying zoning? Now, I understand there's people out here that don't like the zoning. But push comes a shout of zoning wins in the state of Arizona. As far as I'm understanding, is that correct? It, it certainly wins under this development agreement. Okay. So to answer the specific question, total density for development is set forth in 3.4 of the DA, and that allows for the maximum of 3,504 units within the total area covered by the DA. So the density may be moved uh, between parcels within the development at the developer's discretion, 3.6 of the DA. So even if the density proposed is going to be higher, then we elected in the preliminary or even the final plats, the project still must be allowed as long as there is unused density available. That's what the document says. Anything, Phil? Well, I'm just going to make some comments in general. Uh, after hearing from our attorney and the uh, analysis <clears throat> that they presented after the last meeting, uh, we had a chance to digest that uh, over a couple of days. Uh, the white paper that was presented to us just uh, yesterday was a um, within a few hours to be able to uh, review that, and um, our attorneys being able to review the claims on that white paper <clears throat> also was um, not um, a lot of time to do it. So I think at this point we're this body is just uh, determining whether there's sufficient evidence and justification for awarding these uh, water um, service agreement to this development. So I have a number of uh, concerns about traffic and public safety, but that's not uh, subject to um, this body's responsibility. I'll bring those up when and if uh, we see this in front of the council. So I have to decide whether uh, the well, water allocation is uh, justified. I, I would say from what I've heard today that uh, yes, probably, but not certainly. Um, does the density and the uh, number of dwelling units, um, are they justified in moving them into this uh, development? I would say uh, yes, generally, but not certainly. And I still have uh, questions about the legitimate uh, description of what a, a successor or a signs is, not just somebody who happens to b buy a piece of property and all of a sudden have this authority to do whatever they want. So w under those conditions, uh, I can't be certain that uh, approving this uh, is justified until uh, I'm certain that those conditions are met in my mind. So um, uh, those are just my comments, and we're going to be subject to a uh, um, motion here, right? Pretty soon. Can I make some comments, Mr. I'd Chair? I'd love for you to. Thank you. Um, I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. It doesn't sound like you want this. <laughs> um, from a water standpoint, it would be tough to turn it down. But... I drove out there yesterday and with my wife and uh, she started making all sorts of comments. I have to tell you, I, I don't object to this on a water standpoint. I have real concerns about it 
from other standpoints that will come out when we deal with it in council. Um, you know, from a water standpoint, I just think that he has the right to this water. Whether, the, whether it happens is another issue. Because when council gets into it, then we do start talking about things like police and fire and access. And, you know, no. we were there yesterday and uh, we went out to that other ent exit and people were going a million miles an hour up that hill. So there are other issues that need to be looked at once council gets it. Thank you both for your comments. And mine is certainly one to not preach to anybody, but one certainly that has knowledge of being on this council for 20 years and four years on planning commission and actually walking Prescott Lakes when its inception came forward with Bill Brownlee and Jeff Davis. Do I think the gentleman has the right to water? Yes, I do. Do I believe the whole development agreement is a tragedy? Absolutely it is. In 20 years of building in Prescott Lakes, people have moved in. They've loved their own home. They've lost sight of who owns what property and what they can do with it. Uh, the gentleman sitting here in this row that makes comments about uh, this, that, and the other thing, I don't disagree with him. The Homeowners Association hasn't been in coordination with the city of Prescott to actually look at what we needed to change or reassess to make it a valid agreement through into the future. I think you can read anything you want to into that development agreement. Um, and if it was tested in a court of law, I think we'd all be sitting here looking at the same people saying, not in my backyard. But as I, as a, a professional and somebody that takes this at heart, you got to know that the underlying zoning is business general. Now, if we don't like it, I'd recommend the city of Prescott revisit its community development zoning practices and change those. So I would tell you, I don't know that I'll be on council when this comes to us or it doesn't, but I can support the water, but I cannot support the development. So um, at, the, at this point, as chairman, I'll ask for a motion to either accept or to deny. Mayor, I move to approve forwarding WSA 21-018 to council with a recommendation for approval. Do I hear a second? I'll be the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I oppose that. Okay. So the water portion of this now moves let me explain a little bit. It moves to a recommendation to council, and you'll have your chance with your teeth to tear the council apart about how you feel about everything. But when it comes right down to it and the numbers and ADWR and all the things that has to do with water, that's why I had to separate the two in support of this, and I think Steve probably felt the same way. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it, and it will be on the council's agenda. Gwen, yes. Just one more thing. Um, this item is tentatively scheduled for November 9th. Council okay, meeting November, at 3 p.m. November 9th, 3 p.m. right here in the chambers, folks. All right, let's go ahead and take a five minute break um, and let the room clear and call this meeting back to order of the Water Issues Committee. November, can't believe it, November 2nd, 2021. And we do have one correction by the attorney. Just that um, the number of the WSA was miscited or misstated in the motion. I think you wanted to vote for WSA 21015. So if we could just clarify that, that the motion you made was uh, right. pertaining to the uh, Petroglyph Point we'll office park. That. Yeah, I think we should get it on the record All that right. it was basically the, 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 verbal, the verbal equivalent of a Scrivener's error. <laughs> All right. Should I make the motion again? Sure. Okay. I move to approve forwarding WSA 21 015 yeah. to council with a recommendation for approval. And I second it. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. We did it twice, and it was just as fun the second time. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Jennifer, if you'll read item C, please. Consideration of Water Service Agreement 21-018, a water service agreement application submitted by Granite Dells Estates Properties Incorporated on behalf of property owner Granite Dells Estates Properties Incorporated, location APN 103-009P and APN 103-04-009V. Okay, thank you. Did you have something, Craig? I saw your hand go up, or you're just stretching. Yes, sir, Chairman. I believe on the first APN number, we may have missed the 04 in the center of it. Okay. APN 103-04-009P. All righty. Thank you. <laughs> Good go morning. right ahead. Good morning, Chairman and committee members. Kay Sitto, Water Resource Project Manager for the city. We have an application for 273 single-family lots on approximately 425 acres. <clears throat> and I will show you a, the map to give you a location area. <clears throat> here are the two APNs outlined here. And then there's a smaller triangle down here at the southwest corner. And this is Dells Ranch Road, comes around like this, comes down, oops, comes down along here and up. <clears throat> and this is East US 89A, this highway here. So this is for De Granite Dells Ranch Estates uh, Phase 4. And... Can I ask that maybe next yes, sir? Time we can get a newer aerial? <laughs> yeah, I've been using old age. Here. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, it's a Google a Google Earth map, and it talking about current things, and I think I need to see the density, just so people understand where it's at. It looks like it's out in the jungle. <laughs> yes, sir, it it does. Um, so far, and it isn't shown on these maps. Mm. So the, there are uh, six sheets or, that are covered by this, but these are the, this is the, or actually sheets five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, 10, and 11. So this is the area of the new Granite Dells Estates phase four in here. And <clears throat> based on a, on the water resource management model of 0 0.17 acre feet per single family home, the estimated residential demand is 46.41 acre feet per year. There um, is 171 acres of open space, and I did speak with the developer on this, and he estimates that there will just be some um, low water use plantings along the parkway. So I chose a number of 10% not knowing exactly what his plans are because he did say that the landscaping plans will come in after, you know, a little bit later, so I didn't have all the information I needed. But based on 10%, it would be about um, 25.74 acre feet for the landscaping for a total of 72.15 acre feet per year for this phase four subdivision. Mm -hmm. if, I'm sorry, excuse me. The landscape water sounds way out of whack. Well, at 171 acres, taking 10%, landscaping uh, at 1.5. I'm saying that to oh. me, it, it just sounds excessive. Well, I, that's... It doesn't matter. It's going to be what it's going to be. Well... Yeah, I can... Good point. It's It's the calculation. It's not the... The actual use, of that 171 acres is almost 100% native open space. It's not, we're not going to landscape any of that. We'll have some minor landscaping along the roadways, like you see out there if you drive out there now. You'll see some trees along the parkway to give it a nice uh, look. But um, we'll have, the, this subdivision has like 
for it. At the end of the day, we'll have about 40% open space there, and it's almost all native open space to, to keep it nice, keep wildlife corridors going through there. We're, we're not going to landscape any of that portion. So you might look at the calculation and, and split out the landscape area from non-landscaped areas versus open space and look at it that way. That would probably give you a, a more realistic number. And what I, why I said it you know, really doesn't matter because the water resource management model will right. plug in what it's actually using. Mm -hmm. But right. it just sounded really excessive to have 25 acre feet per year for yeah, we won't, a couple of trees. Yeah, we won't use in, anywhere near that, a, a small fraction of that. Yeah, because you don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> nor, will the, nor will the future HOA. And that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I, I chose the 10% because I wanted to err on the side of safety. Yeah, you certainly did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other, are there any questions other well, than the landscape? Shouldn't this number then be modified before we vote on it? I mean, if we're voting to allocate this much uh, uh, water for irrigation and it's not going to be used, uh, what... Um, what happens if they decided to dramatically uh, increase their landscaping sometime in the future once they already have water allocated? We, Couldn't they use it? We, we do know, based upon the other phases of the development, what they're using, we should be able to take that number and mirror yeah. it, I would think. I would think so, too. So I have a hard time uh, voting to approve this when clearly we have a highly excessive amount of acre feet uh, being allocated to this uh, this request. Maybe we vote on the actual houses and then... And no, uh, but, but we're not, according to our current water policy, we're not allocating water to anything. It's, it's basically what is used you know, according to the water, you know, eventually according to the water resource management model. Um, so, you know, I, we could put any number in there. We could put five acre feet or whatever. Sorry, sorry, you're, you're, you're exactly right. So the, there's already a water service agreement and there is already a preliminary plat. So th this is a Frankly, this exercise is a policy issue for, for the city of Prescott. The water has already been allocated um, through a water service agreement, and the preliminary plat has already been approved by this council. So, What are we voting on? There's an application for a water service. Yeah, it's, it's policy, city policy. Well, if, if I may, the 0 0.17 acre feet includes the uh, residential yeah. landscaping demand for the homes. Right. And I thought I was being fairly conservative, choosing 10 percent of the 718 acres. But if you think that should be revisited, I'm certainly willing to do so. Well, I would feel much, you know, much better just the, to the looks of it to say like five acre feet for, for. I mean, that's probably even too much for a couple of trees, but. You do you know, know, Mike, what you've used in the past? I, I mean, it's not like we're trying to. We've have got two other phases out there right now that have got the same tree alignments along the road and stuff. Can you tell us what that might be? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's nominal. Um, we've got, I mean, the one, the one unique uh, thing about Granite Dells Estates is we're metering all water that's going in. Oh, wow. And frankly, we are metering with, with some glitches, but uh, we're metering what's going out. So um, uh, it, it is a great uh, example or a great model of what's being used and, and, and what is going to outdoor water and, and what's being recharged into our aqu aquifer because this is a Prop 400 subdivision. So all, all uh, recharge goes to, all, all effluent goes to recharge sure. in this subdivision. So um, I, I would ask you proceed on, and then if we want to back down on the water allocation on landscaping at a future date, we do that. I mean, right now, what you're allocating is 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 way more than I'll ever use. So it's it's a very like Kay says, it's a very safe number. 
So, so it's not it's not an issue of oh my gosh I've got all this extra water and now I'm going to put in ten swimming pools and you know, um, yeah. but you know, water park and all this stuff. Yeah, this <laughs> it impact our DNO when we have um, committed certain amounts of acre feet to uh, projects. That's kind of taken off the books. We're uh, chairman members. Uh, we are not considering or contemplating allocating water here. What we're discussing is water service application, um, seeking potable water supplies to serve 273 single family lots. They are already in the development agreement. The water is already allocated to the development by units, like another, right. okay. another item we talked about. We're talking about units, so talking about is, 273 is, units, sorry. Um, um, sorry. And as far as us as staff, if we have made uh, a mistake as far as considering landscaping uses and or an assumption towards that with more acreage than we should have, then that's our mistake on the staff side. But we're, we're looking at 273 units. So, so this is basically a perfunctory exercise. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Attorney, what is Yes. <laughs> it very much is. <laughs> Mr. Chair, can I make a motion? You, you certainly can. I move to approve forwarding WSA 21-018, which I've already approved, to council with a recommendation for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. And your no is because you wanted a firm number on the landscape? That and a couple other uh, issues, but uh, you got your majority. Okay. And if I might also mention, um, this is likewise going to be fast track to the November 9 meeting. Okay. Okay. At City Council. <clears throat> and let me make a one comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. Um, we've got to have better maps. I mean, regardless of whether I look at it on the computer or I look on these printed maps, uh, they're almost impossible to read. The um, the lettering, the font is so tiny, even with a magnifying glass, I can't figure it out. And then try to have a broader picture of where this is in relation to uh, 89A, in relation to Jasper, in relation to the uh, phase threes that are already being developed, and whether they're in or outside the airport, airport specific area plan. All those are important things for us to be able to understand before you ask us to vote on it. So if, uh, if my um, nine-year-old uh, granddaughter can't read this font, I'm certainly not going to be able to read it. And I think you have an obligation to bring this information to us in an understandable and readable manner, not only just the, uh, uh, just the specific lot uh, layout, but a broader understanding of how this all works within this. I think we're right up against Jasper, are we not? Close to it. Yeah. So those kinds of things need to be considered when we're taking a vote on it. Yes, sir. Point well taken, and I will endeavor to improve on my map for the next uh, WIC meeting. Thank you. But basically the vote was to move this on to council, and, and council should consider airport-specific area plans and things like that, but the water situation is pretty is perfunctory, right? That's what you said. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I and I, I agree with Phil that we need the maps by next week. Yeah. Okay, I'll I will make sure I have a better map. Thank you. And I will get it on the next for the next council meeting. You I know, will replace it's not it. only for us, Kay, it's for the public that's seeing this because by looking at that map you would think this is the only thing that's out there and that's just not the case. So we really need to see infrastructure roads and everything that exists today. So if we can do that, it'd be great. Yes, sir. I will take care of that. Yes, I mean, even with uh, large developments like this, if they don't have a secondary access while they're building, um, it's a function of maybe having to sprinkler it. And that's certainly a water. Well, and I would certainly like to see a projected line in the sand between Prescott Valley and Prescott to understand where that is according to where Jasper is. Nothing to do with Mike's development, but it's, it's all about information. 
So, all right, let's go to the next one because we've been here for a while. I can see Phil's getting hungry. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. Okay, there's Leslie. No, just flat angry. You don't want to yeah. see me when I'm irritable. Good morning, Leslie. <laughs> Good morning, everybody up on the dais. I know it's been a long morning, so I'll see if I can just We're move you through your infrastructure topic. Your standing person. items that are just pretty straightforward. Okay, cool. But first, I have to see where. Oh, so we okay. Oh, so much for that. Let me try to open that up again. She says it's on here. Have you seen it? No, I got it. Okay. It's tricky when you can see one thing on the screen and something else up there. Always throws me. Now we gotta pull this up. Now we gotta get up to this screen and pull it from here. See, that's what gets us every time. Maybe you can't teach this old dog uh, new tricks. Okay. Sorry, gentlemen and ladies on the dais. No, it's been a long morning. Okay, so this is your standard item, um, standard graph. You can see that uh, the total pump so far for this calendar year is 5,702 and uh, 0.15. The total recharge to date is 3,185.66. And um, I guess the, the notable item is um, because we had some good rains, the reservoirs filled up, and the city did a little catch up here. So you're uh, pumping less than uh, you're recharging at that point. So looking at that, how that works, um, in mid-August, uh, Watson was about two feet below the spillway. This provided an opportunity for water supplies to be released to the recharge facility, resulting in a new level in that reservoir at 6.5 feet, roughly, uh, below spill. As of November uh, 30th is when the window closes. So um, the city will see some more activity in October as well as in November. And then the season will close in according with our stipulated judgment. Um, where we're at, uh, if we look at it from a reservoir standpoint, point is there is an operational pool on Watson at 7.5 feet below um, spill level. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, that's at 6.5. So it gives you a kind of a physical look at what's going on out there. As always, it's important to see that the recharge is um, two supply types that are going into the recharge facility itself and the difference um, or the proportions of each one. And then this uh, chart that you had asked have included, you can see that, you know, we've, the city's gone beyond its uh, pumping with the recharge capability because of some good rain that came in and reservoirs filling. And that takes you on average to about 60%. So um, that's it in a nutshell. And you have that available to you at when you need it. Any comments, Bill, Steve? I just have one, one question. Um, when we're talking about the, and this may, doesn't have something to do with it, but not. When we have those wells out by the recharge facility, how much has percentage wise has that taken off the pressure has been taken off of our Chino Valley wells? Well, it was a requirement of one of our previous DNOs. And so the city needed to occupy wells in the location near where it was recharging. And so the percentage, I think we're looking at, I, you might want to provide a different one. Uh, Craig, I'm not sure, but we're looking at with the modeling for the DNO, uh -huh. a 60-40. So airports picking up, and we've seen the ramping up of those wells in use. Airport 5 has come online this past year, so w more water is uh, available for pumping, I guess. Uh, or I shouldn't say there's more available. There's whatever is available. There's more pumping in that part of the, the area of the city's, city's limits. And then ultimately there'll be Airport Six, another uh, so production. So are you talking wall. basically Airport Sixty, Chino Forty? That's what we're looking at right now, and it's draft. So okay. we're in the midst of that right now, looking that at that with our modelers. So it would be a relaxing, and that's the intent. You know, you wanted to yeah, relax I, I, the, I really the appreciate Chino that, well field, 
bring on more pumping and the area of impact of where you're recharging and uh, give yourself some more operational attitude. Sure. No, I appreciate that. People have asked, and I just need to give them a good number on that. Yeah, and absolutely everything Leslie provided there is, is accurate and correct to what we're doing. Uh, another vision is for a picture in time. Um, I looked at it here in the last couple months, and we are currently pumping about the same volume from Chino Valley as we did in 1992. Oh, wow. So the, the awesome. other is coming from the airport area. That's a nice number to know. That's cool. Would you like to proceed to your next topic or... Oh, yeah. more? hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so excited. I don't mean to, I don't so, mean to push. I'm, I just I'm know so you've had excited. a long morning. My so last meeting, I fell I'm here asleep. to help. Okay, <laughs> let's just go ahead and go to the next uh, focus topic. Comprehensive agreement number one. Okay, so uh, everything's in your packet here. Just a timeline to let you know how we made it to this uh, project called Comprehensive Agreement number one. I'm going to see if this will let me... Just launch from here. It says no. I'm not allow. Okay, so I'm launching the city's website. I'm going to see if I can grab it or not. Aha. Let me just walk you to it and the public as well. So underwater resources, water resource management, Big Chino Water Ranch. So we're having a shift out here looking at uh, the future supplies of the city and the efforts that have been made for a long, long time. Uh, this is where, uh, for this, the party of three, as we've mentioned before, Prescott Valley, Salt River Project, and the city itself, uh, we have a cooperative agreement, $5.6 million. We're in the eighth annual report year, so this has been compiled. Uh, we don't need to read all through this because um, you're welcome to contact me at any time if you have questions. What I do want to take you to, once we get to it, is the conclusion. And that's probably where we need to put our time today. If I can make this a little bit larger. So you can read it and everybody else can read it too. Okay, so... For this project year, it continues to focus heavily on the development of the groundwater flow model. And this is where I know it's challenging sometimes as you hear about a groundwater model associated with your decision and order. You also have one running with your comprehensive agreement number one. You also have some running with your water and wastewater modeling and um, keeping those all straight can be challenging. So this project too uh, has its own groundwater flow model for the area specific to the Big Chino. So with the final contract amendment for the modeling coming to completion at the end of this fiscal year, it is anticipated Golder, who is your consultant on this, uh, they will close out on time no later than July 15th, 2022. During the fiscal year, several monitoring contacts, re uh, modeling contracts uh, have remained active and those will be modified to align uh, to the project needs as this is kind of wrapping up its eight year run. Um, there will have to be decisions made on what the communities are all three parties, how they're going to interact with each other into the future. So it is expected that the final annual report of this project will be produced next year. And as always, we're looking at the financials and the financial condition remains strong for this project. You've heard me uh, mention probably way too many times that we found cost savings everywhere we could <laughs> through partnering, through um, really assessing what kind of equipment needed to be out there. And uh, this was not a, a cheap project by any means. It's far different than an infrastructure project. But uh, we have savings available, and those savings needed to be transferred over to the modeling, which was uh, we knew from the get-go was going to be more expensive uh, than our projections that were provided us by our peers earlier <laughs> could have ever estimated. Um, so that's where we stand with this one. Uh, we're in heavily, heavy conversations. We have monthly meetings and uh, the details here as, long, as well as the maps. Um, I think you probably had enough of maps today, um, but they're all available in this document for you to look at and contact um, anytime you have questions related to this project. We're happy to help. So I'll just give you an example. Crop surveys have been done. So that's one type of map. 
as well as these these type of maps that show you where equipment is located and how it, how it behaved this past year. And that's all I have for the group today. Thank you for your time. Questions? No, I just think uh, we're moving along in the right direction. And uh, uh, lastly, I know you monitor this closely, and I'm very anxious to see the uh, uh, final uh, modeling results and being able to um, uh, allow the public at large to look at those uh, models. And um, we'll see as the uh, DNO uh, assessment and approval gets uh, uh, completed, and uh, we should be in uh, pretty good shape for the next 10 or 20 years. I'd like to make a comment. That is that real wood, wood, by the way. It uh, definitely gets, needs to get right into the record that I, I appreciate Councilman Blair and his leadership on this Water Issues Committee for the last two years. And um, I wish him good luck in all of his future endeavors. And uh, Fishing. Yeah, fishing. So... Thank you, Steve. We really appreciate well, you. You're Thank welcome. You. That'll keep you uh, connected with water. Oh, right? yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Any general announcements, anybody? I think for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and pass today, if that's okay with everybody. Okay. Well, that's it. So we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Arturn.